In this video, I'm going to work through the application of equity method accounting. I'll be preparing the journal entries. I got this problem from another textbook, so this will be good. It'll give you some practice in seeing fact patterns set up in slightly different language. But the basic journal entries should be the same. Before I read all the details, skipping down to the bottom, the requirement was prepare Physicola's entries to record the above information for the year 2014. So we'll be doing the accounting for Physicola. On January 5, 2014, Physicola, headquartered in Minneapolis, Minnesota, acquires 25% of the voting stock of Armadillo Bottlers, located in Austin, Texas, to support expansion in southwestern U.S. markets. Physicola, that's us, pays $15 million in cash for the stock. All right, so we need to do a journal entry for January 5th to make the investment in Armadillo Brothers. So the debit will be to investment in Armadillo, 15 million. And the problem says that we pay cash. So credit cash, 15 million. Next, Armadillo's book value is $20 million at the acquisition date, and its assets and liabilities are fairly stated. Well, that should give you some pause because the book value is 20 million. We're buying 25%. 25% of 20 million, shouldn't we pay 5 million? But yet we paid 15. Well, that suggests there are assets that Armadillo doesn't have recorded, but yet we find valuable and we're having to pay for those. So the sentence continues, except for unreported customer-related intangible assets valued at $10 million with average expected lives of five years. So we did pay extra to get 25% of that intangible asset it does have a stated useful life, so we're going to need to amortize our part of that. So let's take care of the basics. At the end of that first paragraph, it says Armadillo had net income of three million. So we want to report our 25% of that, which would be 750,000. So we're going to debit investment in Armadillo for 750000 The logic is, if Armadillo is reporting income, they're getting larger, therefore our 25% ownership should be getting larger. Our credit will be to equity in Armadillo's income. Recognize that equity in Armadillo's income, that's an income statement account for us. Investment in Armadillo is an asset. We'll put that on the balance sheet the equity in Armadillo's income will boost our income. Armadillo has that unreported customer-related intangible asset valued at $10 million. Since it's unreported by them, they have not been depreciating it. So from our view, Armadillo is overstating its income, at least in respect to our 25%. So we need to amortize our part of that $10 million. So we're a one-fourth owner. That'll be $2,500,000, spread it over five years we need to record 500,000 of amortization expense. That's going to reduce our income. So it's basically gonna be the opposite of the entry we just did. Notice that reduction wiped out a big chunk of the income we had just reported from our investment. Okay, I'm gonna push those further down to make room for more journal entries. So far, I've recorded the original investment of $15 million, our share of Armadillo's 2014 income, and I've done the amortization on that intangible asset. Another common one is to see if our investee paid us any dividends. Looking deep into that second paragraph, it says Armadillo pays total cash dividends of $500,000. you got to watch the language on these. So we didn't get $500,000. We are a 25% owner. We would have gotten one-fourth of those, which would be $125,000. So if Armadillo is paying out its assets, then Armadillo is shrinking. Therefore, our investment account should be shrinking by the part that we received. We received $125,000, so I need to debit cash and credit the investment account. Okay, in the second paragraph, we also need to tackle the intercompany sale of inventory. That maybe is the trickier part of the problem. So let me clear some room. Looks like the sales went both directions. Let's take the first one. Armadillo 
sells canned and bottled beverages to Fizzy Cola at a markup of 30% on cost. All right, so when you read that, you can't assume gross profit is 30%. That's not what it says. It says the way they price it is whatever their cost is, they add 30% to that, and that's the selling price. So now we can use that to figure out, well, what is the gross profit? So for example, if they had something that cost them $100, they would sell it for $130. So selling price of $130 minus cost of goods sold of $100 is a gross profit of $30. But notice that's not a gross profit percentage of 30, because the 30 now has to be divided back into the selling price of 130. So the gross profit ends up being right at 23% on those sales. The logic here is we have to make them defer gains on any intercompany sales of inventory if they're still holding on to the inventory. So the second sentence says, at December 31st, Fizzy Cola's inventory includes 325,000 in merchandise acquired from Armadillo. So that's the part we're still holding on to. So our formula is three parts. The amount we're holding on to times a gross profit percentage times our ownership percentage. So do that calculation and what it tells you is the dollar amount that you should have in your journal entry for deferring part of the income. Okay, so the amount held, 325,000. Gross profit percentage I figured out is 23%, and our ownership stake is 25%. So work that out on your calculator. And I get 18,744. Now notice I rounded gross profit percentage. I could have carried it out more decimals, and that would change the number slightly, maybe get closer to 18,750. So what do I do with that number? I use that as a journal entry to say, I can't report that much of the income. So I need to do a journal entry that'll bring my income down as well as the amount of my investment account. Remember, this is a deferral. I'm not going to permanently say I can't have that income. As soon as we sell that 325,000 of merchandise, then the following year this entry would reverse and we would be able to report that 18,744's income. This is a deferral, not a permanent block. Okay, now you have to do something similar for the sales that went from Fizzy Cola, the sales of syrup that went from us to Armadillo. We don't mark it up as much. We have a 20% markup. Again, that's not gross profit percentage. You have to figure out what the gross profit percentage would be. First, let me clear out the old information. When we make sales of syrup to Armadillo, we have a 20% markup on cost. So if something cost us $100, we charge them $120. So our selling price is $120. Our cost of goods sold is $100. So our gross profit is $20. But you have to divide that back into $120 to get your gross profit percentage. When you do that, you're going to get 0.16666666. So we will have to carry that one out quite a ways to make sure we're getting close to the correct number. Okay, so I'm going to fill out the parts of the formula. How much inventory is Armadillo holding on to at the end of the year? They're holding on to 480,000. The gross profit percentage I figured out is, is 0.16666. Our ownership percentage is still 25%. So I have to now work that out on my calculator. And with a little rounding, I get right at 20,000. So again, what am I supposed to do with that number? What that number is telling me is that is gains from intercompany sales where we had significant influence and I cannot report that as income yet. So I need the same journal entry as before. I need to bring down my income and now I will do that with a debit to equity and armadillo's income and a credit to our investment account, our asset to shrink that back down. And that should do it for this problem.
Again, with this entry also, this is a deferral, not a permanent block. So once Armadillo sells that 480,000 in syrup, next year we would reverse this entry and go ahead and claim this $20,000 of income.